Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringer story synopsis, complete story. As a fun passion project, I've covered other core storylines within okay. one of my favorite MMOs in existence, and I have been getting a lot of requests to continue this coverage. Well, since now I'm only doing videos that I really want to do, let's continue talking about Final Fantasy XIV. And maybe I'll even deep dive into some of the job storylines and other raid storylines because we never got to those like I wanted to do originally. But today we're going to be covering the storyline to Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers, the most recent expansion which has finally wrapped up its overall storyline. One last plug before we get started on the actual coverage. Every Sunday morning for a couple of hours, I play Final Fantasy XIV with my friends. Oh, yeah. And if you want to check me out, I'm over at twitch.tv slash comicstoryandgaming. Oh, yeah. You can click that link okay. down below. All right, let's get into the Shadowbringers plot. When we last left off, the Scions were all in comas, and we were sent by an... Oh, shit. Hold on, hold on. I, have, I, I Ben, I'm sorry, guys. I already have a question. Okay, so when they said they were in comas, why were they in comas? I would imagine it would be because of something from Stormblood. The end of Stormblood. All right. Oh, right. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I just got hit with a memory. At the end of Stormblood, you went to a special zone. Like there was a quest. And you went to like the special zone. And I remember it was like a canyon or something. Okay. Okay. I remember that. Okay. And then you went into an instance or something. Oh, it's right on the screen. Oh, okay. Enigmatic figure to the location known as the Crystal Tower to get answers that we have been seeking at this time. Now in the Crystal Tower, on the source, the team continues to search for a way to return the Scions back to their bodies and bring them out of their comas. However, the hero finds some sort of strange object and is brought into one of the shards of the source. The hero plunges into the world of the first, a strange world that mirrors our own. Okay. Hey. So the Scions actually were transported here first? Yeah, okay. And then we came over. Okay. After arriving in Norvrant, the hero heads to the Crystarium, where they meet with the mysterious voice that appears in their head, and they begin this adventure. The hooded figure that has been leading us this whole time is known as the Crystal Exarch, and he explains that he has been trying to bring the hero here to the first for quite some time. However, his magic was imperfect, and instead, the Scions were brought over, leaving their bodies behind on the Source. The magic is still imperfect, which means... The Source is like a Realm Reborn, right? It's like the main universe? Okay, okay, yeah, okay. okay. ...means that the Scions are stuck on the First, and unable to return to the Source, their home dimension. He explains that time also flows differently on the first, and that the Scions have actually been stuck on the first for some time. When the hero arrives, with them having been here for quite some time, the Scions have all journeyed to different parts of the first, trying to- Holy shit, how long were the Scions there before we got there? Five years? So wait a minute, wait a minute. So the Scions went over, and it was five years before they saw you again? Okay save it from the overabundance of light that has swept over this world and nearly destroyed it. The light has been slowed by the Oracle of Light, who the Crystal Exarch explains was sent by the Source to save them. The Oracle of Light is quickly revealed to be Minfilia, who gave up her oh. life to save the first. The light was that at the end of Stormblood when Minfilia died or no Heaven's Ward? Oh, end of Heaven's Ward blocks the night sky in this world and the monsters that know it as Sin Eaters are descending from it to attack people, devouring their aether and turning them into monsters. The land of Norvront is under the threat of the Wardens of Light who control the Sin Eaters and create this never ending light in this world. The others have tried to destroy these Wardens, but upon their defeat, their power is merely transferred to another. But the Crystal Exarch believes that the hero will be able to defeat the Wardens of Light and absorb their power. Which is so all of the Wardens of Light, even after you kill them, their power goes to another Warden of Light. Or a new, like a Warden of Light is, is born. Okay, so basically it's like you have, what did he say? Overabundance. And they can't get rid of all the light. A new one is created. So it doesn't matter how many they kill. Okay. That's why he brought them to the first. Understanding their task, the hero sets out to gather the Scions from the land of the first, knowing that they will need their help in the coming battles. So first, the Warrior of Light sets out to find the twins, Alize and Alphano. They discover that Alize is an Almorang, where she is protecting the people from the Sin Eaters. 
They discover Alphano and Calusia, where he looks into the Yulmorian people. Wait, hold on. Alize is in Armorot? Oh, Amarang. Oh, okay, okay. I was about to say, wait a minute. I didn't think people went there until the end of the game. Okay. Those who oppose the Crystaria. They discover that Yulmor is actually led by Lord Vantry, who is able to control the Sin Eaters and promises his followers Lord a relaxing is the big guy, trip right? to the He's end He's a thick guy. After finding both of the twins and going through a small mini-adventure with each of them, the hero returns to the Crystarium but is sidetracked by the Sin Eater that is attacking a small village. Our hero aids the village and defeats the Warden of Light leading the attack, but the hero then absorbs, he absorbs the it? Warden's light oh, yeah. and the night sky can be seen above Oh, him. shit. This okay, brings cheers cool. of joy and amazement from oh. the villagers. And with the battle won, okay, the hero okay. returns to the Crystarium to rest. Okay. However, they're greeted by the spirit of Ardbert, who doesn't understand why he has not been... Dude, why is, why is the warrior from ARR here? Basically right here so when your character the warrior of light absorbs the light that's the it's like the it's like the lighting is like parted he is the original warrior of light okay guy can be seen above them this brings cheers of joy and amazement from the villagers and with the battle won the hero returns to the crystarium to rest however they're greeted by the spirit of ardbert who doesn't understand why he has not been able to move on after death like his friends before him you see, he was with the original group that tried to defeat this mess, but they died in their final battle. While he does How did he- Oh, okay, I guess I just said. ...doesn't understand why he has returned as a spirit. He promises to follow the hero and help where he can. So, now rested and with a spiritual companion, the hero and his party decide their next course of action. They are tasked with rescuing Minfilia, who has been taken care of by Thancred, as she has been reborn and a young child. They discover that when the original Menphilia stopped the Flood of Light, she allowed a part of herself to be reborn and give these people hope. These reborn Menphilia look like the Ancient One, but they do not share her powers or personality. They learn that the current Menphilia is in the hands of Yulmor. Heading off to the rescue, the party meets and fights with Ranjit, the general of Yulmor. Luckily, Thancred rescues the party, bringing them to the home of the Pixies and Ilmeg. While dealing with the mischievous pixies, the party once again links up with Yorianje, who joins their cause. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry, there's a lot being thrown at me here. I'm trying to learn. Who kidnapped Ryan? Valthry. Okay, so Valthry is the large gentleman. He lives in Yolmore. That is why you cannot teleport there, because in addition to being a large gentleman, he's also a fucking dick. So he's not going to let you teleport. I remember that part from the main story. He tried to kidnap, or he did kidnap, Ryan. Why? Is it because he doesn't want the light to go away? So he's evil. He doesn't want the light to go away. But Ryan is like one of the keys or something to the light going away. Ryan and the and the hero of light. Because the hero of light can absorb, or the warrior of light rather, can, can absorb the, the aether or the light or whatever. Okay, okay. So that's why Vol 3... Okay, all right. The pranks from the Pixies okay, with the Pixies on. and Ilmeg. While dealing with the mischievous Pixies, the party once again links up with Yorianje, who joins their cause. Okay. The pranks from the Pixies get worse and worse in the side adventure, but luckily our hero has already made a pact with the Pixie known as Fail You, who manages to get the other Pixies to stop with their incessant pranks. After joining our party, Yorianje... What type of pranks do they do? Did they link fart videos? Holy shit, kill people? That's not a prank, bro. Explains that he had a vision of the coming apocalypse when he crossed through the world. Calamities that occur within the various shards, and the party concludes that the flood of light is caused by the source to absorb a light. Wait, Arianje can have premonitions? So he saw a premonition of the calamity? Large amount of light energy. This could be affecting the people of the source's aether, which might explain why everyone is more susceptible to the black rose poison. They re Why do I want us to confirm everything this guy says? I'm no, I'm asking questions, man. I'm asking questions. Oh no, no, no. You know what? This is this is about to start a war because I can't wait until the YouTube frogs see how the way that you're treating this drummer right now, because they are gonna go in hard on you okay because i am an innocent drummer trying to learn okay and understand see i make a video youtube frog says no you're an idiot you don't even know the story so then i try to watch the story i try to understand the story then twitch chat will 
at, read what the fuck you guys are typing. The YouTube frogs, I swear to God, man, this is this this is why this is why that I can't understand shit because of you guys. Realize the large amount of light energy. This could be affecting the people of the source's aether, which might explain why everyone is more susceptible to the black rose poison. They realize what is a black rose poison? Chemical weapon. Wait, it's a plot point that gets dropped hard? Oh, really? Oh, I've never heard about it. Okay. <laughs> Aether poison made by Garlemald? Okay. Is that which might explain why everyone okay. is more susceptible to the Black Rose poison? They realize that what affects one shard has a disastrous effect on the source. Understanding that they are now here to save the first, to save the source, the party becomes more resolute in their goals and heads out. Okay, dude, I, I need to draw this in paint so I so I have an understanding. Okay, so this is the source. Okay, so then from the source... Okay, you have like this, right? And this is... Okay, Shadowbringers, the first... Or what is this? Okay, so Shadowbringers is the first. The source is like... ARR, Stormblood, Heaven's Ward... All that shit, right? Endwalker. Okay, now anything that affects this will affect this. So it's like a chain reaction. Is it like if a person dies on the first, does a person die on the source, or is it like big things? Only Aether. Only big things. I'm going to leave this diagram up. I might need it later. I might need to refer to it. It is has a disastrous effect on the source. Understanding that they are now here to save the first, to save the source, the party becomes more resolute in their goals and heads out. They discover that the corrupted Pixie King is acting as the Warden of Light in Ilmeg, and that he has locked himself within his castle. After gathering the Pixie relics to break the seal on the castle, the party heads inside and fights King Titania. They manage to defeat the Warden of Light, and Ilmeg sees the night sky once again. With this king defeated, the hero relinquished ruling the Pixie Kingdom to Fea U. And I always thought it was called Titania. A major disruption calamity to one of the elements. Earth, fire, wind, water, ice, lightning, dark light. Okay. They managed to defeat the Warden of Light and Ilmeg sees the night sky once again. With this king defeated, the hero relinquished ruling the Pixie Kingdom to Fea U. The Yulmorian army finally arrives to fight the party, but they are then pranked so much by the Pixies that they're just forced to retreat. The party- What do they mean pranked? Turned into trees? That's how Pixies fight? Okay. He then returns to Crystarium, where they discover Emmet Selk, the Asian and founder of the Garlean Empire on the Source. The party prepares for a fight, but Emmet Selk waves them off, as he has no interest in fighting them. Regardless of the fact that flooding the first with light was his plan, he wants to watch our hero and their party, hoping to learn their motivations and hoping that they will in turn learn his way of thinking. As the party continues their adventure, so Emmett Selk also wants to flood the realm with light. Daddy Emmett. <laughs> Why would you type? Get the... <sighs> okay, he wants to flood the first with light so that there is a cataclysm on the source. And will that make this, the source and the first merge back together? Why? Why will they merge? Watch the video. Okay, 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 okay. Ventures. Emmett Selk simply uses... So Emmett Selk, he has a much higher plan. Like, this petty shit with Vol 3, like, doesn't matter. Like, he doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, he also doesn't see others... Okay, others as people. Okay. ...power to appear and lecture them about the days of the Asians. Next, the party heads to Ratika Greatwood, where they are in search of Ishtola, who they learn is leading a group known as the Knights Blessed, who worship the Wait, Dark yo, were they just Tola, caught? ...who they learn is leading... What? Cut. A group known as the Knights Blessed, who worship the darkness. Ishtola sees the hero and is concerned about their Aether, which has become corrupted by absorbing the Warden of Light's power. After Ishtola joins the party, they help her search an ancient civilization known as Ronka, hoping to learn where the Warden of Light is hiding. They build a Ronkan seal that allows them to go to a secret part of the forest where they end up meeting the Viera. The Viera see the seal and believe the party to be friends, agreeing to help them find this Warden of Light in the Greatwood. They discover that the Warden of Light is in an area known as the Quantana Revel, and to get there they have to restore the Aether Flow to the ancient temple. The party braves the temple, but is stopped by Gen okay. General Ranjit. The General laughs, explaining that they have poisoned several members of the Knights Blessed. 
He offers the party the antidote if they will safely lead him out of the temple. Betraying them, he begins to toss the antidote into the vast pit, Dude, and Ishtola dies after him, tossing the antidote to the hero, plummeting into the pit with Ranjit. After giving the antidote to the Knights Blessed, the party discovers that Ishtola put- Holy shit, she's badass! Look, guys, I'm sorry I'm dumb, okay? I'm apologizing. That antidote was for the poison that was mentioned earlier? Okay. Put herself into the live stream as she has done in the past. Bro, she actually died? And that Selk offers to head into the live stream, which he has the ability to do since he is an Asian and bring her back to our heroes. He does this in hopes of earning what? trust with the party. Emmett Selk brought Yastola back, so Emmett just went into the live stream. He's like, nah, bro, I got this. With the party gathered once again, they head into the revel again, and they face the Warden of Light. The monster is defeated, and the night sky returns. And as they exit the temple, they discover the strange paintings on the walls, and Nemeth Selk is all too happy to appear and tell the story to them. You see, long ago, an ancient primal known as Zodiac was summoned to stop a calamity and preserve one of the shards, creating a world of paradise. However, a group of people feared the Zodiac's power and summoned Hydaelyn, who would keep Zodiac in check. It was Hydaelyn who split the world into 13 shards. The oh, and that's Vena. Okay, I have a question. When was Zodiac created? What are the order of events here? Oh, when the original final days started? Really? Did Zodiac cause the calamity? Oh, wait, no. Zodiac stopped it? Oh. Okay, I remember some of that stuff from Endwalker. Okay, so Medion started the final days. Zodiac stopped it. Well, why the fuck is Zodiac a bad guy then? Oh, okay. Cassians wish to reunite these shards and bring back Zodiac's paradise. And that Selk admits that this will kill many people across the 13 shards of the universe. But those that survive will live in a world that was made whole. With story time over, the party continues their adventure, now understanding the Asian's ultimate goal. They return to the Crystarium where Ishtola is concerned that the hero's aether has been corrupted by the Warden of Light's power. If the hero consumes too much of it, they will become a powerful Sin Eater. So our hero agrees to keep Ishtola updated on their condition and finally goes to bed. Before they fall to sleep, the hero once again speaks to Ardbert. When the hero awakens, the Crystarium is under attack by the Sin Eaters who are being controlled by Lord Vautry. The Crystarium fends off the Sin Eater attack, though the death toll is large. Afterwards, the party talks to the Crystal Exarch and the search for the remaining- Okay, okay, I remember that part where Zodiac requires sacrifices wardens continue though they are unhappy about it the party realizes that they must rejoin the reborn menphilia with her ancient self so they set out for the place where menphilia made her last stand Amorang. once they arrive they search for the place where menphilia managed to stop the flood and they are attacked by ranjit once more the hero and menphilia continue onward while fancred delays the general the two warriors fight as the hero and Menphilia manage to contact the Oracle of Light. The Oracle realizes that this is the reborn Menphilia and that they will be able to help the party and save the first. So she gives up her powers of rebirth to fully empower Menphilia. Mm. She returns to the party and Thancred believes that- So Menphilia was the Oracle of Light originally and then she gave her powers to, R to Rhine? Okay. That she needs a new name since she's pretty much an entirely new person. So? She is now dubbed Reen, and she quickly uses her new powers to locate the Amarong Warden of Light in the deep mining shaft. The party heads into the mines and defeats the Warden of Light. Oh, I remember this guy. Absorbing their power. He's just a pile of feathers. Was his name Storge? Yeah, I remember Storge. Yet this time the hero struggles as the light is finally affecting them. Still, with only one Warden of Light left, the party returns to the Crystarium, hoping to end their quest soon. The party returns to Yulmor, where they discover that the people of Gate Town have fallen into a trance and are under the control of Lord Vautry. They then discover that Lord Vautry has been putting pieces of the Sin Eaters into the bread that he hands out to the townsfolk, slowly transforming them all into Sin Eaters and allowing him to control them. The party heads into his castle, where they meet Ranjit once more. And they finally defeat this general, whose name I'm probably mispronouncing. When they finally confront Lord Vautry, they discover that he is the final Warden of Light. He is the combination of a Sin Eater and a man that was created by Emmett Selk long ago to aid in the Flood of Light. Using his- Oh, so Emmett Selk had the plan to flood the world with light and he made Vault 3, okay. 
his vast power, Emmet Selk rips the top of a mountain open, which he declares will serve as his new paradise. Reen is able to use her new powers to heal the people of Yulmore, and free from Lord Vautry's evil reign, the people of Yulmore join the others of Nordvant in trying to figure out a way to stop Lord Vautry for good and end the rule of the Sin Eaters. Dude, doesn't doesn't Vautry like Burge leave? Emmet Selk continues to watch the party and their goings on with a fondness, explaining to the hero that it reminds him of back in the day of the Asian, when people came together to help one another. Emmet Selk tries to convince the hero that they could contain the power of the Wardens of Light and survive the joining of the ship. I have a question real fast. Why is Emmet Selk in the first? Like, why wasn't he in the source? No, I understand that, but does it ever, like, okay, well, what about, like, the second or the third? Or does it not work like that? Okay, so he's basically just seen which shard is the most fucked, and that's the one he went to. Okay, okay, okay shards standing with the Asians in the rebuilt world the hero shakes their head finally the party devises a plan to build a massive talos that will pull lord vatri's kingdom from the sky creating a bridge that will allow them to gain access to vatri's castle the party heads up to deal with vatri and they're able to defeat him however the hero can no longer contain the light within themselves and begins to transform into a warden of light it is then that the crystal exarch reveals themselves because the Crystal Exarch is actually Grahatia, who controls the Crystal Tower and has worked with the hero a long time ago. Grahatia explains that he plans to absorb the light from the hero, jumping into the rift, taking the dangerous energy with him. And as he begins his spell, he is stopped by Emmett Selk, who wounds him. Emmett is disappointed that the hero oh. is so... Is this where Emmett shoots a gun, bro? Or some shit? Weak ...that they are unable to control the power of light. And believe <laughs> I remember that. With all this shit going on, you got different shards, got different monsters. You got a guy that weighs a thousand pounds flying away after he drank a Red Bull. Well, you got all that. And at the end of the day, he just fucking... He just guns him down, bro. <laughs> In that he has seen enough, Emmett Selk decides to continue with his original plan oh, yeah. of the light consuming the first and rejoining it with the source. Emmett Selk takes Grahatia's unconscious body, fleeing to his secret base in the trench, a place far beneath the ocean known as the Tempest. As the light overwhelms their body, the hero can't continue their fight and falls unconscious. When the Those in your company will likewise turn into sin eaters, and in time you will succumb to your base instincts and hunt innocents to feast on their sweet, sweet aether. They awaken, Reen is nearby and explains that she used her newfound powers to slow the light's corruption of the hero's body. Unsure of how to reach the okay. Tempest, the hero begins to explore the crystal. Wait, okay, so what, so what, wait, hold on, sorry, I was reading, hold on, let me listen to the guy. As the light overwhelms their body, the hero can't continue to fight and falls unconscious. When they awaken, Reen is nearby and explains that she used her newfound powers to slow the light's corruption of oh, the hero's okay. body. Okay, Unsure okay. of how to reach the Tempest, the hero begins to explore the Crystarium to so learn... So basically, Reen saved him for now. ...learn about Grahatia. They learn that Grahatia saw the calamity of the Black Rose in a world where all of the heroes had died. Grahatia decided that he would go back to this moment in the first and stop the calamity. The party decided that they must find a way to the bottom of the ocean and they eventually find the aid of the primal Bismarck in this world. Upon arriving at the bottom, the party discovers a version of the ancient Asian city, Amarat. Speaking to a citizen, the hero learns that the history of the Asians, as Emmet Selk explained it, was true. That the primals of Zodiac and Heideland led to the splitting of the world. The Asians believed that the death that the calamity would spread would summon Zodiac once more, and that he would return the world to the paradise it once was. Emmet Selk believes in this plan and hopes to make it come to fruition. Arriving at Emmet Selk's capital building, they're confronted by the Asian, who shows them the fall of the Asians in great detail. As the party fights through this vision of the world ending, Emmet Selk isn't impressed with their abilities. And as the Asians gather, they launch their attack, but Emmet Selk is too powerful for them, easily defeating them. As the hero prepares to attack, the light that is inside of them is too much, 
and they begin to pass out again. But Ardbert appears, finally figuring out what he was supposed to do to aid the hero and give them the strength to fight. Emmett Selk realizes that the hero is now becoming whole, that Ardbert is another version of this hero. Mm. Grahatia appears, summoning more of the Scions, and they launch an all-out attack on Emmett Selk in his true form. Okay, so when we went to Amarath, that that was a vision. So this entire time in Shadowbringers, Emmett Selk has been trying to get you on his side. He's been trying to, to get you to see things from his perspective. So Ardbert is the first version of you, and he couldn't figure out why when he died, he wasn't dead. But then he found out right here that he's going to merge back with you, and that's why he couldn't die. So now he merges back with you. So now you're like a Super Saiyan. Oh, Minfilia didn't let him die. Oh, okay. Hades. With the gathered strength of the hero and the Saiyans, they are able to defeat Hades once and for all. And before he disappears, Emmett Selk appears before the hero asking that they remember the Asians and what they once stood for. With victory achieved, it is revealed that the hero used the light within them to give them the strength during the final fight. Now they have returned to their natural state. The Crystal Exarch stands before the group, apologizing for his deception and for bringing them into this world. The party forgives him, realizing why he did it. And as they return to the land of Norvant, the Crystal Exarch explains that his death was meant to return the Scions to the Source, and now he has no way to return them there. The Scions understand and they agree to find a way to return that doesn't involve sacrificing the Exarch. So our hero returns to the source where they tell everyone of their adventures and what is really happening to the Scions. But unknown to the hero, Xenos has returned to his body, and he has now gained enough power to kill his father. Elgibus, the last remaining Asian, has fled to the moon, where he begins to plan his next move. He knows not how the rest of the story will play out, but he knows that the Warriors of Darkness will share the fate of those who came before. Death by the Warriors of Light. Now with the first no longer in danger, Crystal Exarc wants to stop the light from spreading or whatever. So he tries to summon you, but instead he summons the Scions. So then you come later. Then you go around getting the Scions. You find out Emmett has been trying to merge, have been trying to cause a calamity on this so that the source remerges with the first. All right, so you find that out. You know, I'm not going to lie, man. Like, I forgot that there was even any poison involved. I was just thinking about it, and I was like, I thought there was some poison or some shit. But anyway, that doesn't really matter right right now. So what I was saying was um, you find out that Emmett has been trying to do this for a long time, and he just picked this shard because it's the most fucked up. So then he comes here, he sees that the element happens to be light. He gives Vol 3 some powers, and he's like, hey, take over some light, because for whatever reason, I'm a really busy guy, and I can't do it. So Vol 3 does it. So that's why Vol 3 is evil. Emmett's main goal is to combine the first and the source again, and a shit ton of people are going to die. But the people that remain are going to be living in like a quote unquote like paradise. So then, why did Emmett shoot the Crystal Exarch? Was it because the Crystal Exarch was trying to heal? the main character like because the main character like the because the war of light was having an overabundance of light in aether so the crystal exarch was trying to help him but then Emmett comes in ain't no way bro smokes his ass what happens to the crystal exarch after he shoots him um Emmett takes his body to amarat why does he take his body there oh he wants to learn how he time traveled oh i see okay okay for okay so he takes him there then you go there then when you show up, Emmett creates this illusion. He recreates the final days and you go through that dungeon and then you get to the end of the dungeon and then you fight him, but he's like way too powerful. And then that's when Ardbert rejoins with the main character. That's when he finds out his purpose and Ryan also helps the party. What does she do again? Oh, she didn't do shit. After Emmett shoots the Crystal Exarch, Ryan saves you there, though. Yeah, she saves you there. Okay, so then... Okay, 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 okay. So now... Okay, what happens when we kill him? In his true form, okay. Hades. With the gathered strength of the hero and the Scions, they are able to defeat Hades once and for all. And before he disappears, Emmett Selk appears before the hero asking... Where does he go? ...remember the Asians and what they once stood for. With victory achieved, it is revealed that the Life hero stream? used the light within them to give them the strength during the final fight. Now they have returned. 
Oh, he actually dies? Oh, he goes to the live stream. Okay, okay. okay. To their natural okay. state. The Crystal Exarch stands before the group, apologizing for his deception and for bringing them into this world. The party forgives him, realizing why he did it. And as they return to the land of Norvant, the Crystal Exarch explains that his death was meant to return the Scions to the Source, and now he has no way to return them there. The Scions understand and they agree to find a way to return that doesn't involve sacrificing the Exarch. So our hero returns to the Source, where they tell everyone of their adventures and what is really happening to the Scions. But unknown- So the only person that can go back to the Source is you. But why can you go back to the Source and the other people can't? Is it because you're whole? You're an Assian? Wait, plot armor? Because we are in one piece. Oh, you have traveled with your body. The rest was just the soul. Okay. Known to the hero. Xenos has returned to his body. And he has now gained enough power to kill his father. Elgibus, the last remaining Asian, has fled to the moon, where he begins to plan his next move. Okay. He knows not how the rest of the story will play out, but he knows that the warriors of darkness will share the fate of those who came before. Death by the warriors of light. Now with the first no longer in danger, the crystal exarch, Grahatia, asks for the help of Beck Lug in finding a way to send the Scions back to the source, knowing that eventually their bodies will waste away while they're stuck in the first. The party returns to the source to fill them in on everything that has happened, and then they once again head back to the first. The Scions decide that it is only right to tell the people of the first about the Flood of Light and the Warriors of Light, but the Scions quickly learn that Elgibus has arrived on the first and taken possession of Ardbert's corpse so that he can awaken the first Echo. It is revealed that the first Echo is merely a fragment of their former selves and not a gift from Hydaelyn. While the Scions don't trust Elgibus, they do decide against trying to stop people from following oh, him. Oh, is this the Warrior of Light the task of trial? Finding a way for the Scions to get home. However, it is revealed that the Scions' distrust was well-founded, as yet. they learn that Elgibus plans on avenging Laha Brea and Emmet Selk. To this end, he is putting the heroes through a gauntlet of their past battles within the Crystal Tower. Luckily, Ishtola steps in to help the heroes, and they all learn that Elgibus is the primal of his former self, and was separated from the heart of Zodiac's heart. They also discover that Elgibus was the one who started the Warrior of Light legends, and that okay. his powers increase as more people believe in it. Yo, I got goes that. on to attack the Crystal Exarch. Yo, I have that, man. That thing right there, powers I have that. Increase I actually have this. As more people believe in it. Elgibus goes on to attack the Crystal Exarch and Beck Lug, using one of their devices to create spirit forms of the Warriors of Light, who in turn go to attack the Scions. The warrior heads to the Crystal Tower, where they face against Elgibus, who has taken on the form of the first Warrior of Light. There, it is revealed that the heroes have a connection to the Asian Convocation. Working with Grahatia, the Crystal Explorer, they defeat Elgibus and seal him away in the Crystal Tower. It is, is when they defeat Elidibus, is that the Warrior of Light trial? Okay. Why is he saying the name wrong? I don't know, man. Sometimes I purposely say names wrong to trigger people. Is at this time, though, during the final battle, the Grahatia finally pushes himself too far, and he fully crystallizes. Luckily, oh, though, he shit. Fuses his so memory. he's actually a crystal? So was he having some of that curse from Final Fantasy 16? Into the aura sites that the hero takes to the crystal tower. Using the aura sites, he fuses the future memories of Grahatia into his younger body and reawakens the former crystal exarch while nice. this is going on xenos is planning to take control of the imperial throne once again attacking the heroes to aid him he allies himself with fan daniel who tells him everything that he needs to know oh god fanny i remember fanny about the ancients after finally finding a way to return the scions to the who is fan oh man okay i know he like i know he has a bigger plot to like take over zodiac was he an assian or anything he was right that's, okay that's what i thought all right source the heroes learn that the eorzean alliance has begun peace talks with the beastman tribes and that alizé has started to search for a cure for the primal tempering meanwhile the scions get involved with a pirate dispute in limsa and they help cure the kobold king of his tempering suddenly the strange towers begin to appear across the lands as fan daniel once again reveals himself to the scions he explains that he is a member of the teleforio cult and that he plans on recreating the collapse of Amarat and destroying cities across the source with this primal monster, Lunar Bahamut. 
Oh. Dude, what? I'm like a little confused here. Like, I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't think the footage is... So he's talking about the Crystal Exarch here, but maybe it's supposed to be here. Footage is super off. Okay. Yeah, I feel like there's desync. Okay, well, I mean, we're almost done. Hold on. Did I rewind? Okay, okay. We're almost done. Lunar Bahamut, and because of her guilt, she agrees to join the Scions in their fight. It is after this that they leave to join the Alliance during the battle. And Lunar Bahamut is slain okay, by our okay. heroes and one epic finale for Astinian. Okay. Everyone I remember this fight. I remember that fight. And they discuss the strange monsters that have been spotted across the land. Finally, in the city of Alamir. I'm like lost as shit though, man. I'm going to be real. Okay, so after you kill Hades, the other people can't go back, but you can go back. So then when you go back, how do we bring the souls of the Scions back? Is it after we kill Elidibus? Oh, it's the crystal thing. Oh, and this thing here. Wait, okay, so you take their soul in the first, you put it in the crystal, and then the hero of light just has, or sorry, the warrior of light just has like a basket full of crystals, and he ports back over and puts the soul back. Okay, okay. It's a USB drive for souls. Okay, okay. So then after that, now everybody's back over in the source. You awaken the Graha in your world, and everyone is back to the source. So we go to the crystal tower in our world. Wait, what are those tower? Okay, okay, okay. So so what are the towers? So Zeno starts to build the towers. What do the towers do? Yeah, it's the dungeons in Inwalker. They collect energy. It's 5G for Aether. Okay, okay. I followed this video very well until around 19 minutes, and then it, it got really confusing for me. So 5.4. Okay, hold on. Hell y'all, Worm here. Welcome oh, yeah. to the first of a new series of videos I'll be making that focuses on recapping the lore and story as we approach Endwalker. Okay. Serving as a kind of refresher of plot points, backstories, and storyline concerning and impacting Endwalker's story. In this first video, we'll be Whoa, doing who a the fuck was that, that dude? Patch. Hold on, who's this guy? Is that Fire, Wesker? Plot points, backstories, Bruh. and storyline concerning and impacting Endwalker's story. Dude, is that Gaius or Nero? Dude, Nero's a guy with a hammer, right? This first video, we'll be doing a quick story recap of patch 5.4. An important starting point, as 5.3 marked the end of the Shadowbringer storyline, and everything after serves as laying the groundwork for Endwalker. In future videos, I'll be focusing on patch 5.5, as well as major parties and plot points specifically. Okay, here we go as well as major parties and plot points specifically. Who is that? Boja stuff? Maybe I need to do Boja. Okay, here we go. The story of 5.4, Futures Rewritten, begins with the Scions having recovered from their journey back from the First. Okay. Having defeated the Lydibus and saved the First, All right. the Scions turned their attention back to their main mission mandate, dealing with the threat of the Primals. We start off with a meeting of the Scions who are then joined by former Scion Lys for a happy reunion. She shares important information that the Guardian Empire is in a state of civil war after the events of the Emperor's death. This a was, quick TLDR. This was Stormblood shit, right? Xenos returns from the dead, reclaimed his body, then kills his father, the sitting Emperor. Afterwards, he shows no interest in ruling, thus civil war for the throne of Garlemald. More on that later though. Thancred and Norianje agree to head off to Garlemald to survey the situation and report back to the Scions and Alliance. Speaking of, an Alliance Council meeting is organized, which most of the Scions go to attend, with the exception of you and Grahatia, who instead travel with Alize on an important mission, finding a cure for primal tempering. Quick recap. The fuck is primal tempering? Why you gotta bro me? Dude, see, you know, dude, you guys, dude. Bruh, bruh, what do you mean? Ant asking a question, bro, how can you not know, bro? Why don't you just help me? Primals indoctrinate their followers, but they're summoned through fanatical worship and stuff like that. The only reason the Warrior of Light can fight Primals is that Heidelin's blessing protects us from the Primal. Yep. Primals have the ability to control, aka... Now see, was that so hard to type one sentence, but instead, no. There's just 
tons and tons of chat lines of bruh bro you've been playing 10 years for individuals and make them serve their will without question this is one of the most dangerous aspects of primals and is why only those with the gift of the echo which wards off tempering can stand against them hence why we always take a step forward and all our allies seem to take a step back okay we then meet up with an old friend gabu a Gaboo. young tempered kobold and good friend of Alize, who she promised to find a cure for. This is where the work begins. The idea of a cure- Wait, what's wrong with Alize? Nothing? Oh, I thought- to that. Sorry. Cure was stumbled upon almost by accident, okay. while they were in the first working on a cure for those individuals corrupted by Sin Eaters. Given the similarities, they work on a theory that it can also work to cure tempering. This leads the group to the study of ancient elegant knowledge, left behind in Azizla. They find an archive node belonging to an elegant technologist who did extensive study on the subject of Dude, I hated and law. tempering. Way too big, Through man. this, they discover the mechanisms behind a primal's tempering. It takes like nine result, years to fly anywhere. they're able to come up with a plan of action. They go on a series of studies and journeys to refine the method they wish to use, all which accumulates in the discovery of a brand new magic and combining it with porxies. This streamlined method of curing tempering is now completed. Channel Aether into the modified Porxy, which then channels into the tempered individual, to reverse the effects of tempering on both mind and soul. It's a lot more complicated than that, of course, but that's the basics of it. Okay, thank God. They put the method to proof and test it on Gabu, and are finally successful in reversing the tempering. Gabu is back to his old self, and I have to say, the little guy is downright adorable with his new voice actor. Oh, I'm so glad to see you all. Delighted, happy, glad. <sighs> Gabu! The best part about this method of curing tempering is it can be taught to anybody with the proper knowledge and ethereal connection, which is most of the people we know and most of the Grand Company's ranks. I never knew that character. Porxies can Gaboo. also be mass produced and provided to everyone as necessary. Oh, that's why we fight that flying pig. You soon find yourself meeting with Merlwhip, the Admiral and leader of Limsa Minsa. With the added knowledge of this cure and her recent actions of working to restore peace between Limsa and the beast tribes of Valbrand, she endeavors to reopen a dialogue with the tempered Cobalt tribe, an act once impossible due to them being tempered by Titan. But now with a cure, it may finally be possible. After a series of events where you and yours assist Merlwhip to win the favor of Limsa's pirate crews Holy shit. to back this chartered new course, oh, things damn. will finally progress. Together, you, Merlwhip, and your allies venture to the navel, the center of power for kobolds and the lair of which they summon Titan. They encounter Zada, the patriarch leader of the kobolds, who right off the bat tries to summon Titan. The party restrain him and his allies, and Alizé- <laughs> Dude, Merlwhip just shoots so many people, what the fuck, dude? He summons her porksy, Angelo, to begin the untempering of Zada. After a fierce fight, the party are successful in curing Zada, who immediately comes to his senses and feels great remorse over all the actions he's taken in Titan's name. Oh, so they were like mind but control, okay. at the same okay. time, is very aware of the suffering his people have endured at the hands of man. In particular, he feels resentment towards Limsa Liminsa for breaking their treaty in the past, and is unwilling to fully trust us. Merwib then gives him a chance to exact revenge if he pleases, but after a heartfelt plea from Gabu, and some very wise and amazing dialogue from Merwib, Zabu calms down and senses the truth of her words. Then he agrees to give peace a chance once more. This is a major step in the right direction. Armed with a weapon to finally fight against the Primal's influence, and a positive dialogue to open with the Cobalt Beast Tribes. Things couldn't look brighter. Until we're greeted by a Maelstrom officer, who asks us to follow him. And what we see is a massive tower which seems to have just oh, appeared shit. out of nowhere. Those are the towers Xenos well, created, looks on right? Both awe and confusing at the colossal structure before them. The Admiral receives word that this isn't the only one. The towers have suddenly appeared all or, over. Sorry, Eorzea. Van Daniel. Trouble is afoot. Sorry, I kind of like put those two together. And you and your allies head off to Alamigo to help out with all this madness. Lee barely gets out a hello, how you do, before a new antagonist shows his face. 
Meet Fan Daniel, Fanny. an Asian, and leader of a group called the Telefery. Fan Daniel is a rather blunt and straightforward character compared to other Asians we've met, and tells us his endgame right then and there. To destroy the world, and to recreate the final days. Another recap. The original Final Days was a series of cataclysmic events that happened in the original world long, long ago. One which nearly wiped out the ancient Asian civilization until they summoned Zodiac to save them. Not happy about the cause of this, which was the lives of most of their remaining population, another Asian faction summoned Hydaelyn to banish Zodiac. After a huge battle, Hydaelyn smacks Zodiac so hard she splits him into shards along with everyone and everything. I'm joking. If Zodiac saved them, why did they need to kill or why did they need to stop Zodiac? Oh, so Zodiac was good, but he was also bad because he was good because he saved people, but he was bad because in able to save people, you have to sacrifice people. I see. Joking, of course, except for the splitting part. Hydaelyn's power is the power to divide. So she shatters Zodiac, the world, and all life into multiple shard worlds which is why we have multiple worlds today. It's so much more complicated and detailed than this, but that's the fast TLDR. Van Daniel goes on a bit of a madman rant until we try to capture him, and then a massive dragon, Lunar Bahamut, which has been towering behind him this whole time, sets the roof on fire and then flies off with Van Daniel, but not before stating, Ah, but I nearly forgot. I have a message for you. <clears throat> My esteemed patron. Lord Xenos eagerly awaits you at the heart of the chaos. If you're wondering what Lunar Bahamut is, I'll be getting to that in my next video. Long story short, he's another primal variant of the original Bahamut, that was also the inspiration for the summoning of the Elder Primal Bahamut. In the aftermath of all this, knowing you have Van Daniel and a new dragon to contend with, Kryle and Tataru state they plan to get Astinian's aid. Good news for us, because everybody loves him. We quickly cut back to Lise, organizing a reconnaissance of the tower in Alamigo. Why don't people like Lise? Okay, okay. When one of the scouts returns, however, in a somewhat zombified state. The man having been tempered, but instead of uttering a war cry for a primal, he yells, Finally, we get a glimpse of the Imperial Palace in Garlemald. Xenos and Fan Daniel have a quick discussion about the events that took place and how their plans are moving forward. As for Xenos, gearing up for his fated reunion with his bestie, aka you, declares he needs to find a new weapon suited for such a reunion. Oh, and then he gets and a reaper scythe. Steps on and breaks his favorite sword. Didn't even synthesize it or put it in his glamour dresser. What a waste. Damn. And that's pretty much everything for patch 5.4. It kind of okay, felt like okay. everything we did before Fan Daniel and those towers showed up was massive news and years in the making, only for bowl cut fail Daniel to ruin everything. But anyway, that's the main story and events of patch 5.4. The patch mm. contains so much more outside the main story, but I'll be getting to that in future videos. I hope you enjoyed this video everyone, I personally had a ton of fun making it. As I mentioned at the start of the okay, video, I'll be making more Endwalker prep videos going into detail on the main events, individuals, okay. and factions as Endwalker Okay, I think I know closer. more. Should get you fully up to speed by November. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, and importantly, uh, leave a comment with your personal opinion. Yeah. Finally, hit that okay. subscribe button to stay tuned. I'm gonna come. Okay. Yeah, that was good.